Now, on this day, 70 years ago, the USSR and Nazi Germany signed an agreement which had huge repercussions for the history of the 20th century. Known as Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, some say it managed to postpone fighting between the Soviet Union and Germany. But even seven decades later, the document is still fiercely argued about. It was a late summer night in 1939. World War II was only a possibility although palpable and frightening. In the Kremlin, the lack of sleep was overcome by a surge of adrenaline. Foreign ministers of the Soviet Union and Germany had just signed what would become one of the most divisive agreements of the 20th century. The Soviet foreign minister, Vyacheslav Molotov, knew very well what it's like to be between a rock and a hard place. For months, he fruitlessly tried to forge an alliance with Britain and France, but instead, in August 1939, his signature appeared under a non-aggression pact with Germany. His grandson says Molotov never regretted the decision. Of course, Moscow preferred to have a broader arrangement with the Western democracies rather than Germany. He never regretted afterwards that he signed this non-aggression pact, which he considered to be of utmost importance. He also once said, not once, more than once, that without the pact, we, we would probably have to fight a war immediately and lose it. Seen as a compromise with destiny in the USSR, in the West, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact is often described as a deal with the devil. In addition to the pact, Moscow and Berlin also signed a secret protocol that divided Eastern Europe into German and Soviet spheres of influence. The idea of this line of division of interests was the line where German forces are going to stop. Are they going to stop in Warsaw or Minsk or Moscow, maybe Vladivostok? With or without pact, Hitler would attack Poland. But for the Soviet Union, the problem was whether to go into war immediately when it was not prepared or try to, to, to win some time, some space, and actually to, to get the line where Germans will stop. Necessity may know no laws, but it's no stranger to blame. Western historians argued the pact was the last thing to set Hitler's death machine in motion, with German troops invading Poland just a week after the signing ceremony. Soviet soldiers followed suit two weeks later. In 1939, Hitler from one side and Stalin from another have turned Europe into a chessboard. Czech Republic, Poland and the Baltic states paid the highest price for the game. The allegations of the common Nazi conspiracy are not new. Soon after the end of the war, the U.S. State Department published a collection of documents alleging close ties between Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union. Joseph Stalin responded with a book titled Falsifiers of History. When the manuscript was first presented to Stalin in February of 1948, it was titled a Reply to Slanderers. The Soviet leader was not the kind of person who would be content with just responding to allegations. Instead, he accused the West of conspiring against the USSR while playing a double game with Hitler. Less than a year before the Soviet Union and Germany signed the pact, France and Britain left Hitler partition Czechoslovakia, also in the hope of averting the war. And like Stalin, they were proven wrong. Aksana Boyko, Art.